<laughs> I know you probably can't see this, but uh, I'm beginning to feel like I'm in a jungle. <laughs> My little uh, tomato plants, like maybe this big, maybe about that big around, are like this big around and four feet tall. <laughs> They're growing like crazy. It's amazing to me. I'm just like, wow, unbelievable. I mean, I'm having a hard time lifting them. I pull them full of water and, you know, I try to move them around to keep it, you know, like in sunlight because, you know, I only get certain portions of sunlight. And, like to give as much of it as I can to the tomato plants because they grow, you know, a lot of sun. Man, they're heavy now. <laughs> it's a workout. Uh, but you know, they've grown so fast and it's been so amazing to watch that life does that, you know, is that things grow. You know, if you give it the right amount of trust, you know, a lot of water, good soil, make it, you know, available, you know, for the plant to grow. Like I leave it in the wind for some wind to strengthen the roots and the, the stalk, but when it's heavy winds, I move it into the shade, you know, protect it. That life does that to us. You know, we go through storms and our roots get strong in the Lord, you know, sometimes, but there's also a time where you get uprooted, where you get transplanted into some other place and time that you need to put roots down again and you need to maybe formulate a better plan or maybe get an idea of what God wants you to do and where he wants you to do it because it's not always about staying in the same place like I put my plants out you know up here on this well right behind me this one and uh, as long as it's not too strong a wind it can stay here my cherry tomatoes are actually pretty good size you know they're, they're oh I don't know there's five of them in the rest of them are getting ready to come out, you know, and they're, they're green and they're getting bigger. They're, you know, I don't know, about maybe nickel, you know, kind of like a nickel size, you know, maybe a little bit smaller. But they're growing, and it's just amazing to me, you know, and as I watch them develop, you know, I keep thinking, you know, of how much I watch for the wind or I watch for the chill. And, you know, we had a infestation of uh, bugs, you know, on one of the tomato plants. And what happened was that on one leaf, it was like all of a sudden there was like these little tiny bugs and then there was like thousands of like look like look like little eggs you know that man it had gotten like three leaves just coated with them and I went wow all that that fast and because I check them every day you know pretty much and uh, so we went out and you know we sprayed it with this one spray that didn't work because it was supposed to be green friendly <laughs> so we got this other spray and it killed them <laughs> you know but anyways the point is, is that, you know, that fast, it would have wiped them out because it wiped out our, our right here, our tulips, you know, kind of killed them off. It was like, we didn't catch that soon enough. And uh, so on the tomato plants, it was like those two leaves, you know, and now I check it and I don't see any, you know, that have returned or anything, but it's amazing how fast things like that can happen, how fast disasters can hit, and how quickly it can turn your amazing growth into something that's like amazingly wiped out. <laughs> kind of like my plants too, like the windstorm the other day. If I would have left these tomato plants, which are about four feet tall, in the wind, it would have leveled them all the way down to their base. It would have just broken and snapped them off. So we need to arrange our lives and guide our lives by something that knows the weather and knows what we need. We need to walk with God and talk with God in a more intimate way than we ever have before. As a matter of fact, because of the times we live in, being that you were born for such a time as this, that you got saved in these latter days, in these last days, in this last generation, you really need to work on getting personal with God. You need to develop a very clear and open communication with God in such a way that you have a relationship that's dynamic that is causing you to understand where you're at and what the boundaries of your life should be. Because there are some places where maybe you shouldn't go. There are some things that maybe you shouldn't do. There are some things that maybe you shouldn't get involved in because they're going to affect you. They're going to infect you with contamination that maybe 
you know, you don't catch it in time and it infects your whole body, you know, and you wind up, oh my God, dying of cancer or AIDS or some other disease or maybe even some sexually transmitted disease or something else that's killing you. And while God could heal you, he doesn't always heal people. He does sometimes and sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes better that the body die, that the spirit survive, than the spirit be weighed down, you know, in the point of being turning away from God as opposed to going home to be with God. So life and death really is kind of like ambivalent, but the question is the quality of life that you live. You could live a life better than what you have right now if you will walk in his ways. You can live a life that's more pleasing to yourself and also pleasing to him if you operate according to his ways of doing things. He has laws and rules and regulations that go beyond what we call the law of the land or you know the laws that you see in society that are sometimes beneficial to us. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to stop you from sin because you're still sin, you'll still break the law, you'll still transgress. It doesn't mean that it will, you know, cause you to, you know, be far from God if you do transgress those things, but you can be forgiven because you are a Christian. But you could live your life in a better way that makes it a benefit because you know the consequences of actions that have happened. So you choose to avoid them. In other words, you don't step out in front of a car doing 60, you know, and think that you're going to survive. That's kind of what God's laws are for. They were kind of like trying to tell the children of Israel at the time, look, you need to kind of like, you know, when you when you get this kind of meat, you need to bleed it off, you know, and you need to wash it, you know, and if it's got blemishes, you need to get rid of it because that's disease, you know. And God gave them really the instructions in how to live. And now that we have, you know, a lot of our society instructions down, we need to learn how to live spiritually. And that's why God gives us spiritual laws, so to speak, and spiritual ways of doing things like, you know, don't hate but love, don't fight but, you know, turn that over to God, let Him fight for you, don't, you know, attack but rather let God be your defense, don't step out into places where he hasn't sent you because his protection is on you where you're at, not where you want to go. You know, those kind of things. And as we do those things, then we find ourselves blessed and growing and developing like we're supposed to. When we don't do those things, then we do find our life not as abundant as it could be. Because Jesus said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly in this life as well as eternal life to come. He gave us his spirit so that we would be able to discern the better way to go, to be able to understand that there is a choice we can make and we can make the right choices, to be able to listen to his voice so that we could hear him tell us which way to go in every decision we make. But the choice is still really up to you. You can live your life miserable. You can live your life bummed out. You can live your life in bondage. You can live your life in addictions, but you don't have to. You can have a better life. You can live in a way that God would have you to live, that he always cares so much for you, that he would give you his mercy and grace, that you would be at peace with him and have contentment. He shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that thou wouldst bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thine hand might be with me and that thou wouldst keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested, and kept him from evil, and increased his coast, and had his hand with him. And indeed God did bless him. Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said unto God, Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much, and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with you to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. O Lord, thou art our God, let no man prevail against thee. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa. O that thou hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. There is always the opportunity to turn around your life your circumstances, your way of living, or your 
challenges that you face by calling upon the name of the Lord. We're told by Jesus that they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he wasn't speaking of salvation only. He was talking about where you're at today. If you're in trouble, don't wait. Don't hesitate. Call upon the name of the Lord. If you're in dire need, don't wait. Don't go looking around for answers. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call to Jesus. Call upon God. Ask Him to lead you and direct you. And you'll begin to find that some of the circumstances will fall into place. You may get an idea to call something else, you know, a medical doctor, or maybe, you know, some other situation, a go to a clinic. You may find monetary remuneration in some way that suddenly out of nowhere someone sends you monies that you might have needed. Or you may have to pursue it. You may have to go through a lot of rigmarole in order to be in the place where God can show you that that was his way, that he wanted to bless you and encourage you. Because it's not always about the way that you think you should go. But we are told that if we do pray, then he would answer that he would deliver us because it's always not about what we can do but about what he can do when we put it to him in prayer and leave it there then God will move heaven and earth for our behalf and cause us to be delivered and then not only that he'll show us a way to avoid it in the future or to be provided for in a means with which we don't have to go through that again the circumstances of our life are meant to be that kind of instruction for us. When we don't hear so well, sometimes it's about going through the tough times. It's about doing it the hard way, what we used to call the school of hard knocks. Well, spiritually, you're not supposed to go through the school of hard knocks. That's not a good way to go. God prefers you go by the way of obedience. To obey is better than sacrifice. It is not the school of hard knocks he wants you to endure because you're going to go through hard knocks anyways. What he wants you to do is to go through these circumstances that will be challenges and to acknowledge him in them so that he can direct you in the way that he would have you to go. Because as you go through those circumstances, you'll see that in the midst of them, right when you're at your worst and you call upon the name of the Lord, you'll see someone else in need. Yeah, you know, when you're at the worst, when you possibly have nothing to offer anyone else, you'll find that there'll be someone else worse off than you. And at that moment, you'll show whether you're a Christian or you're just a baby. Because the baby will take what they want, what they want, when they need it. But the Christian will give up his last morsel of bread for the sake of the other person. Because they'll lay down their life. And even as with Elijah and the woman who gave up the last morsel of her food for the prophet, even though her son was starving, God will bless you for that with which you do. So it's not really just about you going through the circumstances for your own reasons, but because when you hit the bottom, you can look around and you'll see there's someone down there that you can minister to. Because sometimes the only way to get us out of where we're at is to put us where we're needed. So you may be needed where you're at, the way you are, if you'll just call upon the name of the Lord and be saved.